morning, church. Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from Matthew 28, 1 to 10. May we stand for the word, please? He has risen. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. And guards shook for fear and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you in Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring the disciples the word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Amen. In the presence of the Lord, we remain in worship with the choir. <laughs> So 
change my life and I will praise him. I'll worship him. saving. Amen. Thought I was worth keeping. Hallelujah. He sacrificed his life. Can we give God praise? Somebody put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks on this glorious Easter Sunday morning. For one thing I know, one thing above all else, that Christ is risen. That's enough, God. That's just enough for our lives to be filled with joy. And I pray, God, now as we search the scriptures and hear your word and hear an old, old story, God, that our hearts will hear it in a new way. God, we need your spirit to speak to our lives. And so in the reigning, risen, resurrection, and returning, Savior's name we pray and ask it all. Let every redeemer say amen. 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 Our message this morning coming to us from the book of Matthew, chapters 1 through 10, desperately seeking Jesus. Desperately seeking Jesus. If I can be honest and transparent today, I can tell you that every Easter I agonize. I agonize. I mean, it's Resurrection Sunday, y'all. It's, it's nerve-wracking. It's a monumental event. It's the entirety of our faith rests on the resurrection. We may have disagreements about many things, but this is at the heart of our common faith. It's not based on our denomination. It's not based on the size of our building. It's not based on how big your Bible is. It's not based on how you used to worship under a brush arbor and now you've got a great history. But it's the resurrection. It's the resurrection that all of our faith it hinges on. I mean, Chris Christmas is beautiful and wonderful, but if he never rose from the dead, we'd have no reason to celebrate his birth. If he didn't rise from the dead, then the main goal of his life would have had no purpose. And so today we hear the Easter story. It's a story above all stories. It's a story that changed the life on all the earth and changes our lives even today. It's the story of Jesus Christ and his victory over death. And while it's easy to gloss over the story because we've heard it so many times before, we've, we've been there, we've done that, we've got the T-shirt to prove it, I urge you to not make light of this Easter story. It's a message that's worthy of celebration that ought to put a song in your heart, ought to put a clap in your hand, ought to put a praise on your lips. 
step ought to put a stop in your feet ought to put a wave hallelujah glory hallelujah it ought to do that y'all because Easter is indeed the joyous reason for this season but joy was not the thing that those women felt at the tomb that first Easter morning, clapping and singing and waving and stomping was the last thing on their minds. Wasn't even a remote possibility at dawn on that first Easter Sunday morning when Mary and the other Mary went to the tomb. They went to look. They went to, it means to watch, to observe, to hold vigil. They went to look now, Matthew now Mark fourteen forty six tells us that Joseph Joseph of Arimathea had gone to the tomb and rolled a stone in front of the tomb, so the women didn't have the strength to remove the stone, so they went to look. Couldn't believe what they just witnessed on that Friday. He'd been bound. Jesus had been beaten. He'd been spit on. He'd been mocked. A crown of sharp thorns laid on his head. His head was struck. He was stripped. Nails were driven into his hands and his feet. His side was pierced. The women had witnessed the horror of all of this. <laughs> Desperately seeking answers, they looked. How had things gone so horribly wrong? Was Jesus really who he said he was? Was he who they thought he was? If he was, how could it have gone down this way? He walked on water. He talked with authority. He, he cast out demons. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. So how could it have happened? And so they came to look. There was no clapping, there was no singing, not, no praising, no waving, no stomping. There was sadness, there was despair, there was anger, there was hurt as they came to look. Say sometimes all we can do is look. We hear of another shooting and all we can do is look. More innocent lives taken. I saw in the paper two more people shot down. Teenagers shot down. Senseless gun violence. And all we can do is shake our heads and look. Global warming. And all we can do is look. Poverty running rampant. All we can do is look. Inflation going higher. All we can do is look. Food prices soaring. EBT cuts. Health care out of reach. Medicine prices. Government corruption. Sickness in our bodies. And we shake our heads. And we look at the TV. And we look at our tablets. And we peruse our computer. And we wonder if things will ever get better but in the midst of this sorrow and in the midst of this sadness and in the midst of this despair and in the midst of this hurt Matthew's gospel gives us some good news gives us some good news today Matthew's gospel begins his story of Easter with an earthquake and a visit and a voice from an angel. Don't miss it. The first Easter. First Easter begins with an earthquake and an angel who comes down from the Lord. The women are stopped in their tracks. They're desperate. They don't know what to do next. Now, the earthquake, maybe it was response to the earthquake that happened in Matthew 27. But I would venture to say also that the message from the angel from the Lord was also a timely response for a desperate moment. The women are desperately looking and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. They don't know where to go. And God's angel appears to them to speak a word in their life. Saints of God, when all you can do is look, when life stops you in your tracks, when life paralyzes you, I'm so glad God's got a word for your life. I'm so glad that God's got a word your problem. I'm so glad God's got a word for your situation. I'm so glad God's got a word when you're going through. And I believe I got some witnesses today that know God 
God's got a word in your life. Cast your cares on me, for I care for you. That's a word. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's a word. Let your heart not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. That's a word. Anybody glad for a word this morning? I'm glad for the word of God. God's got a word for each and every one of us. Let me just give you a few words that I think God spoke to the women and God speaks to us today. The first thing we see in this pericope, of course, is the intervention and the presence of the angel. The angel says in verse 5, do not be afraid. For I know you're desperately seeking Jesus. Now in English, that do not be afraid, it seems like a command. Seems like a command. Uh, and it's impossible to achieve. Fear comes. Fear is a defense mechanism. Fear can save your life. If something's coming towards you, fear can do what it needs to do. But what the angel says about fear is not a command. It's a comforting assurance. It's, Nothing to fear, the angel is saying. You don't have to fear, hallelujah. The voice comes from an authority in heaven. This is an angel that had the power to come from heaven. This is an angel that had the power to roll the stone away. This is an angel that had the power that looked like lightning. This is an angel that had the power to sit on that stone. And in essence, what the angel was telling those women and telling us is that we've got to live courageously. Amen. We got to live. Now, they were still afraid. We see it in the Bible, but they had a purpose. They did not leave. They stood their ground. They were scared, but they stayed. Y'all, sometimes we leave too soon. God is saying, sit right there. Stay right there. Do it afraid. Sometimes you got to do it afraid. Sometimes you got to Walk towards your walk, afraid. Sometimes you gotta talk the talk, afraid. Sometimes you gotta face the devil, even if you're afraid. You gotta move toward Jesus, afraid. Sometimes you got some obstacles, but you gotta do it, afraid. Sickness in your body, but you gotta keep on moving. Tribulations in your life, but you gotta keep it going. Church hurt, but you can't let it stop you. Talking about you, keep on coming to church. Y'all, we gotta do it even when we don't feel it. Gotta exercise our faith. God, the Spirit of the Lord, said through that angel, Fear not, tells us always so many times in the Bible not to fear. He told Joshua not to fear when he was taking over from Moses when Moses died. And I believe that the reason God says fear not is that he also says I am with you. Saints of God, God says I'm with you. Y'all, God is with us, saints of God. He's right there by our side. Saints of God, he's right there in our front, in our back, on our side. At the top and at the bottom, God is on our side. He went on to say this angel from the Lord, he's not here. I know you're desperately seeking Jesus, uh, but he's not here. Now, the last time they saw Jesus in Mark's gospel, the women had gone to anoint the body. The reason they had to come on this Sunday morning to anoint the body is because when Jesus died on Friday and, and the sun went down, it wasn't enough time to anoint his body before sunset, before Sabbath began. So you got to picture this. He just died on Friday. They were thinking Sunday would be even worse. They'd have to really come to terms with what had happened. They'd have to look at that beaten body one more time. They'd have to try to keep themselves together because the day was going to be even worse. The life of Jesus had come to an end. Have you ever been there? 
When life, when a day in your life has been so rough, has been so tough, has been so painful that you think things will never get any better and you begin to prepare for the worst. They thought Jesus' life was over. And the angel came with words to the contrary. The spirit of the Lord came through that angel to let them know their conclusions were incorrect. Their assumptions were flawed. The angel came to say to them, essentially, it ain't over. Hallelujah. It's not over. It ain't over. I know that's not proper English, but I got to preach it like I feel it. It ain't over. The angel of the Lord said, y'all, and he's saying to us, it ain't over. I came to prophesy to somebody today and let you know you was ready to call it quits. You were ready to throw in the towel. You were ready to wave the white flag of surrender. That thing you've been praying for still hadn't happened. The ministry still hadn't manifested. Your body still aching with pain. Hallelujah. But it ain't over. The marriage still might be in trouble, but it it's not over. Your life still might be in chaos, but it's not over. Things might still look the same, but it's not over. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but somebody showed up today ready to give it all up. And I need to tell you that it's not over. It ain't going down like this. Amen. This isn't the end of the story. It's it in the last chapter. I came by to tell you on this Easter Sunday morning that it's not over. Lastly, I need to tell you that he's not here. And I stopped by to tell you that the B clause of verse 6, the angel says he has risen just as he said. He's risen. Now, this is a good place. This is a good place. He's risen just as he said. Our God, our awesome God, our miracle-working God, our way-making God, our door-opening God has risen just like he said. God gave his son. The son gave up his life at Calvary. God raised him from the dead. God, the Father, Jesus, the son, working together to change the world and your life. And this this is somebody's story because you know that you have done some things that God got you out of. You know you've done some things that only God can see you through. Can you look back over your life and see where God has brought you from? Can you look back over your life and testify to the fact that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, through death did not have the final say but God defeated death and saints of God because God defeated death I want you to know today that God can do the same thing in your life because God defeated death there's nothing too hard for God because God defeated death is there anything God cannot do God can pay that bill God can heal your body God can restore that relationship God can put your home back together God can fill the church up he knows the plans he has towards you plans for your future peace and not evil to give you future and a hope and because God defeated death and raised Jesus from the dead you got to know that God can handle anything that's going on in your life Death put up a good fight, but God is the GOAT, as they say, the greatest of all time. He's the heavyweight champ of the universe. The grave had the space picked out, but God canceled the reservation. Hell thought it had the last word, but God's voice declared not on my watch. And on this Easter Sunday morning, I 
believe our assignment is clear. The women were instructed to go quickly and tell the disciples he's risen from the dead. And they went with fear and joy. Remember I said sometimes you got to do it afraid. But they went. They went in spite of what they felt. They went. And we are commissioned. I believe that's our assignment, y'all. We're called to go tell the world about a risen Savior. We go to, we're called to go tell a desperate family member about a risen Savior. We're called to go tell a desperate co-worker about a risen Savior. We're called to go tell a desperate world about a risen Savior. Tell a desperate church member about a risen Savior. Tell yourself when you're about to give up and you think all hope is gone. Tell yourself about a risen Savior. And when they ask you, how do you know? Sing that song that the hymn writer wrote. I serve a risen Savior that's in the world today. I know that he is risen no matter what foes may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And every time I see him and need him, he's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. And you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. If you're desperately seeking Jesus, know that he's not here. He has risen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, let us all together say amen. 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 Let us pray.